Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm talking to you about why narcissists can't get over their relationship usually with their parents or who's ever raised them. So this is a very common theme with, uh, with narcissists is that whoever raised them, their issues in life all stem from that person, even if it was indirectly or not at all related to the person who raised them's fault. So let's just assume, for example, that the narcissist is raised by uh, a mom and a dad. They're their mom and their dad are the people who've raised them their whole lives. Usually when the narcissist is a child, there's um, something going on that is an indicator that this person is going to have one of the cluster B personality disorders. And what usually triggers that is some form of trauma. It doesn't always have to be, but it's common that it is some for, sort of trauma. And when this happens, whether that's caused by the parents or not, it doesn't matter. The narcissist will often blame the parents for why they are the way they are. And again, this has nothing to do with normal um, issues that would come up because you're a narcissist. So for example, if the narcissist is lazy, it's going to be because the parents didn't install a work ethic in them when they were a child, and it's therefore the parent's fault that now the narcissist is an adult without a work ethic. So again, it doesn't have to be because the narcissist is self-centered or selfish or abusive. These traits that have to do with narcissistic abuse are not necessarily the traits that I'm talking about. I'm talking about any shortcoming in the narcissist's life. It's often... Um, the fact that the narcissist will blame or trace that trait, that seemingly negative trait, back to the parents. And the reason is because then the narcissist doesn't have to take responsibility for changing anything about his or her behavior. Let me give you another example. As I said, the, um, the onset of narcissistic personality disorder, and again, severe NPD, even moving into other um, diagnosable personality disorders uh, are stemmed from abuse that happens during childhood that's not ever uh, resolved or treated properly at the time. The narcissist will start to develop some of these traits as a defensive mechanism, as a coping mechanism as well. So for example, if the narcissist is abused as a child, whether or not that's by the parents or or not, it could be somebody else in the narcissist's life, it will be the parent's fault that they didn't um, protect the narcissist enough when they were a child. It will be the parent's fault that they, um, that they put the narcissist in that environment, whether or not the parents could have controlled it or they had a direct say in whether or not the narcissist was in that environment or not. So this, by that I mean, if the narcissist is raised by one of the parents, like the narcissist, let's say, is raised by the mother, it will still be the father's fault in the narcissist's mind. The father could have done some kind of thing to prevent the narcissist from being in that position, whether or not he was involved in the narcissist's life at all as a child or not. This also goes for if the narcissist was adopted. If the narcissist was adopted as a child, raised by an adoptive family, the narcissist will now blame both the adoptive parents and the biological parents. And again, this has to do with spreading the, the reasonings for why the narcissist is the way that they are. I have a video that I did a few weeks ago called um, The Narcissist is Both God and Victim. This type of mindset goes into creating the reasoning that the narcissist is using in this situation. The narcissist needs to be both the victim in the situation. So by making it the parent's fault, regardless of how old the narcissist is or how long ago um, the abuse or traumatic event happened, it's always going to be the parent's fault because that way the narcissist is the victim and it keeps people who are not aware of 
uh, how manipulation works or people with weak boundaries in a place of feeling sorry for the narcissist and letting them get away with certain behaviors that you wouldn't normally let them get away with had you not had the information regarding their childhood, their upbringing, the traumatic event, whatever it was that happened with them, uh, you wouldn't allow them to get away with that had you not had that information. And the narcissist knows that. So the narcissist is creating a field where they are the, the victim, first of all. And number two, this helps them create the, the godlike complex in the scenario where the more adversities that they've overcome, that they've made it through, the more it also keeps them in a position of this God complex, right? Where they're able to overcome anything, they control everything, they can manipulate people here and there and use them as little pawns in their game, and it allows them to enforce the narrative that, number one, they first are feeding themselves, that they believe themselves, but number two, it also keeps more people in their supply chain, so to speak, um, so that they can continue the type of behavior that they they use, which is very destructive and often significantly abusive. Um, so by blaming somebody else for, again, for their childhood upbringing, whether or not this is uh, a one-time event or an ongoing um, situation that the narcissist faced when they were a child, they create more seemingly more uh, odds for them to overcome and to beat. And again, this creates a feedback loop for them where people feel sorry for them. People will let them get away with things had they not known that information. And people will allow them to, um, to remain abusive towards them, even though it may have happened many, many, many years ago. What this also does is it creates an out for the narcissist. So again, if they can't play the God card of look at all of these things that I've overcome and maybe I haven't quite perfected on how to talk to people or how to treat people yet, but look at all of the things that I've overcome in my life, if they cannot play that card, then it also gives them an out for their behavior. I was never taught how to do that. I don't know how to do that. I didn't grow up in a home with a mom and a dad, or I grew up in an abusive home, or I grew up in a home where my parents were very absent. And it makes an excuse. It makes an out for the narcissist. It creates an out, regardless of how old they are, for their behavior so that they don't have to take responsibility for it. Um, you know, on this channel, I talk a lot about the victim mindset and why it's so important that you identify the victim mindset when you are recovering from narcissistic abuse, because if you don't, you're going to use a lot of the same uh, coping mechanisms that the narcissist has used. Number one, because that's the default. Uh, that's the default for human minds to to work at. This is, wasn't my fault. Why should I have to clean up my mess, right? We are, we are programmed to have justice in our lives. And when it feels like an injustice, we feel like we don't have to take responsibility for that, regardless of the fact if it's our life or not. So number one, <laughs> that's, that's how we're programmed. You will default to that. Number two, if you were raised by a narcissist, if you lived with a narcissist or around narcissists a lot, you will, a certain amount of you will reason the way that they reason. You will start to think like how they think. You will start to um, uh, make sense or justify the things that they did and why you want to do those things now. All of these things are normal responses uh, to the situation that you would find yourself in. But the reason that I want you to identify the victim mindset early, as early on as possible, is so that you can be very aware of your your thoughts, so that you can turn your conscious mind to your non-conscious mind and pay attention to the things that you are rationalizing when really they need to be addressed and changed. You need to face those things, address them, and change them. Because oftentimes there's people who are stuck in a self-abusive cycle um, with their thoughts because they're also facing similar situations that the narcissist did as child, um, but, but maybe they're handling it now in a different way. 
However, a lot of the coping skills are going to be the same. So if you were abused as a child, that does not excuse what you've gone through. This is not justifying or letting somebody off of the hook who needs to be held responsible for their, for their actions or their activities. My point here is saying you're doing yourself more harm. You're doing the same thing the abuser did to you, to yourself, the longer you allow this mindset to go on. And I've talked a lot about this before, about why it's important to detox your body after narcissistic abuse, because your your body is going to be flooded with so many hormones and chemicals and neurotransmitters that are just creating this toxic environment for your body. And if you're not conscious about your habits, your eating habits, your exercise habits, your sleeping patterns, things like this, then you're just continuing to allow yourself to get more and more toxic. And this absolutely affects the quality of thoughts that you will have during the day. So these things go hand in hand. They need to be addressed. And in order to get out of that loop, get out of that cycle, you need to create a new one, a healthy one, one that you can build upon and grow from. The toxic thought pattern, um, it's called toxic rumination, actually destroys brain matter, gray matter, that you need in order to do your normal daily tasks. It will destroy it. And so there's many levels of why this is so important that you find it and address it. Because it's not only that you're creating unhealthy relationships with other people, or you're creating unhealthy work ethics that impact your job, or whatever outside of you. It's also that you your you as a person, your body is becoming very toxic and your body can't help but create toxic thoughts from that situation because you're only giving it the materials to create something toxic. You're not you're not interrupting that cycle with healthy thoughts, healthy food, good sleep, exercise, healthy friendships, all of those kinds of things that you need to create a healthy new lifestyle, new mode of doing things. This is not a fad. This is not a diet. This is a lifestyle. This is a complete life change. And if you don't identify the fact that you're in this victim mindset, uh, in fact, I have a video where I talk about the, um, the drama triangle and how to interrupt this cycle of becoming, um, of becoming your own coach, of becoming your own cheerleader, of becoming your own boss and creating a whole different cycle other than the drama triangle that most victims of narcissistic abuse will find themselves in. Because the more you're in that cycle, the more likely you are to become the abuser. And again, it starts with yourself. You're you're going to abuse yourself in that cycle, but also that will spill out into your other relationships. There's just no way around that, that whatever's inside will come on the outside. So I hope this video has helped you and helped you understand a little bit more about why narcissists will always point to their upbringing uh, when it comes to justifying the reasons why they do what they do, why they think what they think, why they behave the way that they do. It's either going to play into one or of two narratives. Either they are a victim and they want you to feel sorry for them and give them more and more free passes to behave that way and not hold them accountable. Or number two, it's to use control and manipulation by giving you the impression that they've overcome so much in their life that their control or manipulation of people or situations is the normal response for coming out of such an abusive environment. It always is self-serving. It always is still part of the abuse cycle and it will escalate. Letting this go one time is not just letting it go one time. This will continue. The narcissist is learning what you specifically as an individual will allow him or her to get away with or you as a corporation as well. If you are employing narcissists, they will often find out what you are and are not willing to tolerate and how far they can push your boundaries to what uh, what will benefit them versus how much um, output or work they need to do for you. 
So again, you guys, I'm Dr. Angel Storm, and if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel below and turn on the little bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video to this channel.